Welcome back to the D2 Nation podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your co-host, Wayne Cavati, and joining me as always is Bethany Bowman. Welcome back, Bethany. Thanks, Wayne. Excited to be back and excited for two awesome guests once again this week. Yeah, obviously this is a huge week for D2 football as the selection show is looming on Sunday. Um, there are plenty of teams that know that they're getting in. They don't know necessarily know where the seating will be and how it's all going to fall. But many are sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for that bracket release on Sunday. That's true. And today we're going to turn our attention to one of the breakout teams and stars of the 2022 season and currently the number four ranked team in Super Region 2, Virginia Union. So joining us today is head coach Dr. Alvin Parker and D2 football's leading rusher, Jada Byers. Thanks for being here, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So, Coach, we'll, we'll, how we like to start the show is p- pretty much talk about how we wound up in D2. Uh, you're no stranger to the CIAA, um, and you've been at Virginia Union for a few years now. So what brought you to D2? Oh, that, that's a good question. You know, um, I think everybody, you know, um, has lived that Division One dream because, you know, most of the time when you, when you kind of grew up in our era, that's all you really saw. You didn't, you didn't you didn't know a whole lot about you know um the D2 landscape so um you know that was that was a little different for me because you know um my parents you know um went and played at HBCUs you know my mom was an HBCU grad my dad was an HBCU grad so um I had a little scope of it but um again that's all I saw was you know um flip on the TV see Notre Dame Miami all the big time schools so of course that's where the dreams kind of lie at you know so um but like 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 anything else in life you got you got to choose who choose you you know um so um division 2 chose me you know so i had you know uh, four great years at virginia union um you know walked away with a degree and and played some great great college football and um met a lot of great people along the way and um and then they say life kind of come at you full circle um it did I got the opportunity to be the head coach there. So, you know, um, I chose division two and I guess I've been choosing it, choosing it my whole life. So, you know, um, that that's, that's kind of it. Yeah. Well, Jada, same question for you grew up in New Jersey and landed with the Panthers. When you left New Jersey, you set the high school record for touchdowns. And what was your recruiting process? Like, tell us the story of how you wound up at Virginia union, because it has some twists and turns to it. Uh, my my recruiting process, it, it was simple, but it wasn't simple at the same time. I only had, I want to say, four Division One offers at the time where I was at. When I was at St. Joe, I had LIU, Sacred Heart, and I forgot the other two I had. And Sacred Heart, like Coach said, like every kid from Jersey always wanted to go D1, and that was my object to go D1. And I had the offers from Sacred Heart, I want to say, since my freshman year, but I never posted about it, stuff like that. And... After that, I got there. I was trying to make myself comfortable somewhere I really wasn't comfortable at. And long story short, I went there. I didn't want to be there, and I wound up leaving. And Barker gave me a call from his best friend. I want to say Quan Johnson, somebody else from Jersey, too. That's my old All-Star coach. And he gave me the call one day, and I was by myself at the bowling alley, just bowling, doing regular high school kid stuff. And coach said, I want you to come play football here. And once I got here, it's just it feel as though he just opened me with open arms and just feels great to be part of this community here. And it's just like my freshman year I got here, it's just everything I just wanted I wanted to be a part of, I'm a part of. So this all started in a bowling alley, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's where he got the call. Um, okay, so coach, coach, I guess both coach and Jada, but coach to you, I, I, wanted, I want to apologize because I think I'm a little bit of a curse here, okay? I don't know if you know this, but I do the Lindy's preseason rankings. And for the past... <laughs> For the past two years, I had you as number 25 in 2019 and 2021 as number 25 in my sleepers, and the season didn't go as planned. I finally leave you out of the preseason top 25, and you guys are 9-1 and one and top 10 team in the country. So I feel like I may be at fault for that. So I'm not – no more preseason rankings, I promise. But let's talk about the season, Coach. Um, you know, a, a new quarterback – uh, no Charles Hall, who is a professional level talent, right? Like there were, there was changes to be expected. You did have Jada back who had a nice year last year, but were you expect, was this where you expected to be 10 weeks into the season? Um, No, I kind of expected us to be 10 and 0. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, realistically, um, 
I knew we had the makeup of a championship team. You know, I knew we had a lot of the pieces and I, I've been a part of a couple championship teams and I knew we had the makeup, you know, um, and, and like a lot of people say, you know, it was on paper. You know, I thought we, we, we had a good amount of depth and, and we had some things that can kind of push us through, you know, um, but, you know, you had to wait to see what the buy-in was going to be like, what the chemistry was going to be like, and some of those other things that make up championship teams. You don't you don't just um, make a championship team just because you got a team full of talent. You know, it helps. But a lot of the times, the chemistry, you know, um, all the little small things got to kind of fall in place. And I start to see that, you know, um, in the spring for us. I saw a lot of good things in the spring, but – you know, um, I kind of kept it quiet and, and, and didn't kind of even acknowledge it to the team what I even saw, you know, um, but I saw a lot of good things at that point, And I just knew if, if, if you know, this, 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 this round pig going this round hole and this square pig going this square hole, I, I just knew some things were going to fall in place. We we're going to have a good team. And then um, we got to camp and, and I seen some of that, that bonding and that connection start to happen. And, and, and some of those things that I say are those intangibles, they started to happen. And, um, we got to week one and it, it it just it hasn't stopped since then. I I've seen it and you know, we 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 put together that type of team and I feel good about it. Yeah, yeah. I remember the Valdosta State game. I was just like, okay, <laughs> all right, there, there's something special going on here. <laughs> well, Jada, for you, you had a nice freshman season, but this year, wow, you lead D2 football by nearly 300 yards with 1,809 yards rushing, more than 180 yards per game, and 21 total touchdowns. Coach Parker is known for getting the most out of big backs, but what was different with this offense for you this year that led to the big season? Uh, I would say the thing that was different for me this year was me going back and recognizing things I did wrong as a freshman and getting better as the things that I do wrong, always correcting the wrong. And that's why I feel as though made me better as I came through next year. And then next year, knowing that this year right here, knowing that I'll be one of the main backs this year, it just it kept me with that motivation that I got to keep grinding and got to keep going stronger. And then also refer to my front five. It's just I know I was getting that same front five back. We lost one guy who was saving our hopes and great left guard. And it's probably one of the best left guards that I probably played with that came through Virginia Union since I've been here about two years. And just knowing that I had that same front five coming back with other guys behind him that would be able to play the spot as well as him. And it's just, hey, get that connection with my front five and we got to do what we got to do to take this thing on the road. And that's what I just always told myself over the summer. Yeah, I mean, a returning offensive line, especially a good one, that that's invaluable. I mean, you're that is a huge, huge – like. You said it's on paper, but once you see it rolling, uh, things just come together. But, Coach, you've had great running backs before. You know, most recently, Tabius Tabius Taylor was there, what, two, three years ago, and he had a great year. What, in your eyes, makes Jada so special that he's having this unbelievable season? Um, I think he's become he's become a student of the game, you know, um, one. And I think, um, you know, secondly, you know, uh, the guys love playing with him. You know, he's a great teammate, you know, um, and that right there, you know, guys play hard for guys they love and the guys, the guys really love him, you know, um, and he's shown me um, an ability to be able to count on him no matter what, you know, um, you know, I already knew I can count on him. I, I already depended on him a lot for what, what he brings to our team, but I just remember a moment in the Valdosta state game and he, he, he wanted the ball every single play, you know, um, and, and, I deferred to it and I gave it to him, you know, um, and, and, and the numbers show kind of what happened. And I think the nation got a chance to see that night, what type of player Jada Bias was, you know? Um, so, you know, um, he, he, he doesn't care who gets the success, the, the success and who, who, who gets the acknowledgements and things like that. You know, I just think that makes him a special player. Um, it don't help. He can make two to three guys missing the phone booth either, you know? Um, so, you know, those, those things don't hurt either, you know, but, he, he he's just when the ball touches his hands, he he's just a special player, you know. So you know, um, and I just want to make sure sometime I don't sit back and watch that, you know. I still got to coach it because sometimes it's easy to become a fan of it. So you know, um, but he, he's definitely an outstanding player, and I'm glad he's on our team. Well, so we were talking before the show. It sounds like he keeps you on your feet plenty, trying to uh, <laughs> trying to school you in basketball and stuff. <laughs> it don't matter what it is. He, you know, he he's gonna come to the office and pick on me and make sure that you know I'm on my toes. <laughs> so you know, I look just like the players love being around him. I love being around him too. So big win 
this past weekend against your in-state rivals, it seems like CIAA rivalries go to another level. What was it like not only winning the game, but the week leading up to it? Jada, maybe start with you. Oh, honestly, winning that game, it, it meant a lot for us because after we lost to Shawan, people thought it was over for us. Our whole team had doubts, and we wound up having a team meeting, a personal team meeting, and everybody speaking how they feel. And we had a coach come in there, and a coach told us, like, we don't want to hear about the bigger and back and forth what's going on between this team. We want to recognize what's going to make us beat state. And that stuck with me after that. And like with, with everybody, like we we bought into this program. This is what this program is here to do. We're here to win. And like Coach said at halftime, we're not here to win the halves. We were we here to win the series. And I hope that's something that keeps to us going through this playoff. We're trying to win every series of the ball game. But some, when the first was to start, even when the, we win the toss, we don't win the toss. We want to win every series of the ball game. Not the first quarter, the second quarter. We won every series. And I feel though that's what was going to take us far. That's what happened with us against Virginia State. We came out second half, even though it was, what, 23 to 21 at halftime. We were only up two points. And we were talking about, like, it don't feel like this is a close game because it shouldn't have been close. But coach said it. We got to win every series after this. We came out there to do. Yeah. And, and you talk about those rivalries. So, and, and, Coach, you know, you've been around for uh, the CIAA for a while. And I think it needs to be mentioned, you know, how good a conference it it actually is. And the and the problem is, is that you're buried in Super Region Two with the Valdosta States and the West Floridas and the, and the teams that get the big attention. And it and it's a conference that gets overlooked. So how about <laughs> on, on the show you make your pitch for why the CIAA is one of the more underrated conferences in D two? I think um, we play a a great brand of ball here. You know. Um, you know, we do a lot of good things within the conference, you know, um, but I think last year and some of the years prior, you know, teams like uh, Bowie State have made a run, you know, made it to the regional finals last year. It's been, you know, was was a top 10 team and things like that. So people got to see, you know, um, them kind of carry the banner for the CIAA the last couple of years, you know, um, and they've been, they were, they've been a nemesis to us as well. You know, um, we win that game any of those last, you know, three years. We played them, you know, we're, we're probably carrying that banner, you know, um, but, you know, we learned a lot from those things, you know, and, and, and we're ready to kind of carry some of those things into this year, you know, um, which is why I think we're having some of the success that we're having. But we play a great brand of ball in this league. You know, we have a lot of, lot of good teams, you know, um, and it's evident, you know, um, with some of the makeup of some of the teams you might see, you know, um, it, I think um, we definitely have to play a little bit better out of conference, you know, um, some of the things that probably, you know, get you the notoriety that, you, that you're looking for, you know, if you're trying to move the entire conference is, is the way you play out of conference. So um, we got to make sure we, we we do a great job with that. And I, I'll i be the first one to say, you know, we haven't done the best job with that, you know, in the last few years. You know, um, that's why that's why the Vought Austin win meant so much at the time, you know, um, because just to kind of go to one of the conferences that's, that's looked at as one of the powers in the region, and, and to get a and get a victory like that was something not just for Virginia Union, but it was for the whole CIAA. So um, it felt pretty good with that, you know. But um, we play a great brand of ball, you know. Um, and a lot of times, I think the, the with the league, you know, we go ten straight games and play a conference championship. So um, a lot of times, you know, it's almost like who can get to October, so to speak, and be healthy. And I think for the most part, you know, we did that. You know, um, we made it through probably about the first seven to eight games. And, 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 you know, kind of unblemished. And then <laughs> we, we we suffered a few injuries at that point, but I thought we had a good amount of depth and it put us in position, you know, to be, you know, to get our name called on Sunday. Um, and I think that right there shows it, you know, um, we have a few teams I think could have been in contention that could be playing, you know, on a division two playoff level. Um, but again, you know, you have to do some things, I think, out of conference. And, and once we do that, we can kind of solidify ourselves as one of the, you know, one of the power conferences in the country. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at Super Region 2 and as a coach, I'm sure it's a nightmare for you, right? Like just getting out of there. And if you look at history, one of the championship game teams over the past five seasons has come from your Super Region. Um, what's it like to have to prepare for, you know, you, you said that Valdosta was a big win, but just knowing that in order for you to get far, you have to prepare for the Gulf South conferences and, and everyone else in there. What, what's it like that uh, on, on a daily basis? Well, um, since I've been here, we scheduled tough. You know, I think, you know, uh, we, we we found some teams within, you know, Super Region 2, and, and you know, we signed two-year contracts with them and, and, and to get those games. We played Lenore Ryan when they were a top team, Carson Newman when they are a top team. You know, so we, we haven't shied away from the competition, you know. Um, 
And I think that helps you, you know, um, that's first and foremost. But when you look at it and, and you say, wow, <laughs> you kind of go down it, it's a bunch of good teams in in, in region two. You know, um, I think, you know, even when you look at it from how things are kind of settling within the nation and the regional rankings, you know, you look at it and it, it's still kind of a gauntlet. You know, um, it's a bunch of one loss teams and, and a bunch of teams that you feel like, hey, they just probably need a shot in the dance and, and and they can do something with it, you know? So um, I think, you know, one of those, one of those reasons you got to buckle up, you know, put on a, put on an extra chin strap, put on some extra pads and because it's one of those type of regions. So, you know, um, but I think we have a good ball club, you know, and we can match anybody within the region and um, we're going to see how that falls when, when we get our shot. Sure. Jada, kind of same thing for you. You got a chance to play Valdosta State and absolutely shredded the national runners up for 319 yards. To keep your season alive, you're going to have to play the West Floridas and Gulf South heavyweights to stay alive. Just talk about preparing and the emotions behind that, knowing these teams are all very high caliber. Uh, the emotions behind that is big and it's crazy to feel, but the, the team that we're going to have to play is just it's going to take our team to do a lot of studying because I never watched any of them teams play. It's, my second year of college, I'm just really getting into the college. Even with the season I'm having, I never watched West Florida play or the Wingy or the Benedicts. So now it's going to take this week when Saturday comes, we finally we play that whole week that the you know, is going to be watching film. The Virginia Union Panthers are going to be watching them on the point that we play in. We have to look at everything that we do and we make sure we correct our rooms and we got to out there and just be the best stuff. So them what Virginia Union really is. That's good. And for both of you guys, either one to start what makes d2 so special for you you know there's so many reasons why like you said coach we end up at d2 it, it chooses us but for you what has the experience been like for you i think the biggest thing with um d2 is you know and um some other people have the model but a lot of times the championships get decided on the field you know you don't have to worry about um a selection committee uh you know to an extent um, but you don't have to worry about, you know, that you kind of play at a bracket type of thing, you know, um, and it gives you, you know, the ability for the champion to be decided on the field. And I think um, the D2 model, it, it emphasizes just that of a student athlete. You know, a lot of times I think the, the the bigger the bigger realm of things just kind of focus on the athlete side of things. But I think, you know, um, the, 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 the Division two and even Division three, the models got it, it tests what type of student you are. Because a lot of times um, you're not giving out a bunch of full scholarships and all these, these guys got to be dedicated to the work on both sides. So that right there helps it. And then, you know, just the, just the kind of the small college atmosphere that you might see, you know, um, and I think we do a good job, you know, um, at Virginia union um, packing out the stands and showing these guys support. And, you know, um, a lot of people might not think, you know, you, you tell a division one guy, you know what, uh, 6,000 people are going to be at the game this week. And they might say, huh? You know, <laughs> you tell us, you tell our guys, you know, um, and we have probably the highest attendance in the league. You know, we sell it out and put 6,000 in there and it's a packed house and those guys love it. And I think, you know, um, we bring a, a different type of, you know, flair to the community and, and, and everybody that's involved. So, you know, it just feels more closely and tightly knitted, you know? um, So, you know, that, that's division two is, you know, I choose division two and I'm, I'm going to kind of always be that way. Yeah. Jada, how about you? Uh, I, I love division two football. And when I mean it by like me saying that, that I love it is because division one and to really be honest, it's about politics and stuff like that. When it comes to division one, division one coach about to take a, a six two, 215 pound running back over a five, 780 pound running back. And, that's speaking for every kid that's probably playing Division Two football ever because every kid that's playing Division Two right now feels as though they can go play D1. But, okay, if I go to Alabama, I'm going to have to sit behind a, a running back that's going to the NFL. I'm not ready to get my shot until I get to my junior in the league. Rather than me going D2 and getting the shot that I need and having that bonding with your coaching that you can really have. And that's why I feel as though D1 don't really have a lot because <clears throat> it's a lot of kids that came D1 to where we at now, to Virginia Union, like one of our DBs, not say DBs, one of our, uh, our line, lineman, Dan, uh, Dan Bryant, I call him DB because that's his initials. He came from D1. He said it's it's, it's, it's it's different over there because it's sad that you have to email your coach to want to meet with them. 
here you don't have to email your coach. All our coaches' offices are wide open. You can walk in their office at any time of the day and talk to them about what do you want to talk to them about. And I feel as though that's what builds a team. And Division One is cool to be at, but I had this pair of cleats. They were Adidas pair of cleats. And my coach gave it to me when I was in the 11th grade, and it said D1, D2 doesn't matter. D1, D2, D3 doesn't matter on the cleats. There were some Adidas cleats that came out. And I wore them cleats almost every game in it because I really felt that in me. And it's like me being me, all the D1 schools that overlooked me. And then it's like D1 schools that are trying to come get me now. And I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. I, I won't be leaving at all because I get that question a lot. And I tell kids that too. They be like, oh, are you leaving D2 football to go bigger? I said, no, I feel as though I haven't done enough for me to get there. And if I did, I would have done enough for high school. For me to have 102 career touchdowns and 10 touchdowns in one game, you would think that kid is going to go to the biggest D1 school in the world. And not to just say this, like if Trevor Hunters was to score 10 touchdowns right now in a football game, that's going to go everywhere you can post it. And that's what separates us. And that's why I tell people D2 is really where it's, where it's really at. And it's, it feels great to be at because you will get your shot that you need to be great. And it will show every coach that overlooks you and it makes you humble, like Coach said. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, okay, so that was the um, that was the easy part of the show. What we're going to do is close you out with the D2 Nation hot seat, and this is where the hard questions come in. Are you guys ready? Yep. Let's All go. Right. Bethany, you know the drill. You get them started. Let's start off easy. What is your favorite NFL team, and who is your favorite player of all time? Jada first. Uh, right now, I don't have a favorite NFL team, and my favorite player of all time, in my eyes, that I watched, I would say Tavon Nelson. Growing up, were you an Eagles fan in South Jersey, or did you like the Giants or Jets? Uh, growing up, I liked the certain players and players that played different positions, so I never had no outstanding team, but one team I did like at the time was the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. Okay. okay. Coach, what about yourself? I grew up as a, you know, nothing to the name, but I grew up as a Redskins fan. I grew up in D.C., so I guess, you know, to be politically correct, I'm a Commanders fan, you know, now. <laughs> Uh, but um, also, you know, uh, kind of like Jada said, I, I love watching, you know, different players. And I thought um, in my era, kind of growing up, everybody wanted to be Walter Payton or, you know, or Eric Dickerson. You know, I remember I had some swim goggles and I would put them on under my helmet and just wear those like to make sure I look like Eric Dickerson. And <laughs> while he was blinding me, couldn't run the ball, couldn't do anything because Eric Dickerson wore those goggles. I wanted to make sure I had those same type of goggles on, too. You know, um, so you kind of emulated and did some things like that. So you know, anybody that 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 was good back then that played the, that running back position, I was I was in love with. But I definitely remember, you know, uh, being a huge fan of, of Walter Payton and Eric Dickerson. That's awesome that you went with the goggles, uh, <laughs> uh, Coach. We'll start with you on this one. Uh, what's the best football movie of all time? The best football movie of all time to me is the program. Nice, good one. I love That's the program. You know, um, because it uh it tells a little story about how the college football game goes, and you know, then it shows you know parts of adversity and and how you kind of overcome some adversity. And um, now that you know, um, I'm a college coach, you look at it from a whole different perspective. You know, you look back at that movie and laugh. You know, um, and we was on a road trip one time. And it was about maybe three hours away, so we put on a program, and you know, we watched it, and all of those guys loved it. They had never seen it. Nice. So, you know, um, so that's probably one of my, one of my favorite football movies. Was that Coach Furry's answer last week? Yeah, last week. Coach Furry from Limestone said the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Favorite football movie. It, it's hard. I watch a lot of movies, and I can give you probably my top three favorite football movies, and I would go with The Titans, When the Game Stand Tall, and – I just go with them too. It's hard. It's a, it's a lot of good football movies out there. And well, actually, uh, what's it called? What's this called? What well, Jim Brown is the running back? The Express is that? Yeah, that? the Express. Yeah, them three, them three movies right there. The Express, yeah. Games in Tall, and, and Remember the Titans. Yeah, well, Bethany's the uh, the Remember the Titans fan, so you, you got a you got a fan there. That's for sure. <laughs> Jada, what are you listening to in your headphones pregame to get you ready for a game? Oh, I listen to all kind of music, but I listen to music I would too. So I listen to like to a couple of Meek Mill songs, and uh, I listen to a couple of Jersey Club songs that give me my energy because I love to dance around and stuff like that. So I got a variety of songs that I listen to. 
Some coach, if you could pick the pregame playlist for the locker room. <laughs> they 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 hate me. Um, because it'll be a bunch of Earth Wind and Fire and Isley Brothers and you know, um all that type of stuff. So we rotated at practice sometimes. We take turns. Nice. So, um, you know, um, and you could definitely tell when it's my turn, you know. So um, <laughs> but you know, they they play some music and when and when I can understand the words and and and, and all of that, I like it. Coach, so, I, I have seen Earth Wind and Fire in concert three times. <laughs> you guys are on the same page. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, <laughs> this might be a hard question for you, Jada, because I asked you before we jumped on, you had a couple of days off and all you did was watch football film. But what's your favorite binge worthy type of television show, you know, like a Netflix show or something like that that you've watched recently? Uh Netflix show that I watched recently, uh, I would say Manifest. Okay. That's a great television show. I didn't. I was afraid that maybe you don't watch TV and you just watch video, uh, football film all day long. <laughs> nah, I, I would say manifest. Coach, how about you? I'm a um, I'm a Game of Thrones type of type of junkie. So you know, I just finished uh, the House of Dragons. So you know, um, I reward myself like you know, I kind of tell myself you know when you're done watching all the film and you you got everything cut up. You get you get to reward yourself with one of those one of those shows, you know. So um, I kind of do that every week. So you know, um, so I, of course you know finished Game of Thrones when that went off a while back. But you know, um, I just I just recently finished House of Dragons. So, so yeah, I love Game of Thrones. I got to start House of Dragons. I'm gonna do it all <laughs> in like one weekend. <laughs> Since we just had Halloween, what's the best candy ever, Coach? Ugh. Um. Not too much be the M and M, you know. Um, it's hard to be some M and M's, peanut M and M's. Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard. You know, um, Snickers kind of close, but um, it, it, it's hard to be some peanut M and M's. So, <laughs> Jada, Jada looks like he completely disagrees. Yeah, he probably I, likes candy corns. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> oh. Did you just eat a pack last week? I think I seen a pack in your office last week. Too. Not at all. <laughs> Well, uh, are you thinking? Hmm? You thinking, or you got an answer? What What you want? Oh, to uh, I didn't go Halloween trick or treating this year, but I would say the best candy. I would probably put a, a Twix. I would say a Twix, like the commercial say, "You're not feeling yourself, eat a Twix." That's all right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right, last one, uh, Coach. We'll go to you first. If you had one superpower, would it be to be invisible or to fly? Um. I think both of those can work on fourth and one on the goal line. You know, um, <laughs> I think both of those could work. Um, so <laughs> I can fly over the defense when they can't see me. Uh, you know, um, I think all the great superheroes were able to fly. Yeah. So let, 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 let me take that one. All right. How about you, Jada? You kind of already do fly. Invisible. <laughs> I want invisible. You want to be invisible? Yeah. Is, is that for, is that for any reason other than football? What else would you use it for? Oh, me being invisible because I, I like to play around a lot, so I could see me now just being invisible, <laughs> keep opening Coach Parker door, and closing it, and going to mess with him in the office. It's a lot of reasons. I want to say teleport, but the guy didn't say teleport, but I was still invisible. That's like that's such. a good one. I could add that in the mix in the for the future. That's a good one to add in there. You definitely I, definitely. What did you say? A lot of people's going to say teleport. <laughs> you definitely have the feel of the jokester on the team. Like I could tell that you you have a, a great like you coach said people are playing with you, but I could tell you have a a great attitude coming to the locker room every day. Um, but like I said, you made it through the hot seat. Congratulations, and we want to thank you both so much for uh, again for joining us. And we're going to let you go get some rest and wish you good luck on Sunday. We know that you're going to be watching the selection show just like we are. So uh, thanks again for coming on the show. Appreciate it. We appreciate you guys for having us both. Yeah, absolutely. And remember, before we go, D2 Nation, we need your support. So give us a listen on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Give us a follow on social media, and we'll see you next week on the D2 Nation.